Good morning, lovely people. This morning, we will talk about water. We talk about the source of water we are using in the aquaponic system. As you can understand, the water we have in aquaponics is very important because it is the link between the fish, the bacteria that are living into the grow bed. You see there, inside, there is a media with bacteria. And it's also the link with the plants. All the vegetables we are growing, they basically drink the water, but the water is also carrying the nutrients from the fish pond to the grow bed. So the water is very important. And we have the fish that are living into the water, so they need some very specific water quality. The bacteria need also specific water quality. So when we work in aquaponics, we need to fill, fill the fish tank. And the water from the fish tank will be raised to the grow bed, as I just said. So what type of water should we use to fill the fish tank? It's basically the question I have for you today. And the question we will respond to. Because it's, a, it's really something that people ask me pretty often. And some people seem or uh, think that they can't do aquaponics because they live in the city and they don't have access to specific source of water aside from tap water. And in this video today, I will explain to you that we can work with tap water, but there is something to, to be careful of. So I would say that most water sources are fine in aquaponics. We need to understand that the fish need a certain pH, right? in the pH around 7 and depending on the species of fish we, we may have some fish that prefer pH a bit more basic or a bit more acidic but the reality is that then we have the bacteria the bacteria generally prefer pH a bit higher the higher the pH and the more efficient the bacteria will be well it goes into the, a certain limit right but a pH of 8 would be very good for bacteria Unfortunately, it wouldn't work for the fish and it wouldn't work for most plants. Most plants they, they like a pH that is uh, a little bit acidic. You know, 6.5 is good for most plants. So, you understand, if you are living in a country where the soil is very basic, a lot of chances are that the water you will have access to is very basic, very hard. When we say very hard, very basic, is, it means a very high pH, a pH with a lot of uh, dissolved hydrogen inside. So what do we do in this case? Um, so when you have access to water, you can rectify the pH before adding the water in the system. That's a good way to do it. So generally the water is too acidic. You can add um, some potassium uh, hydroxide. You can also use uh, other things, you know, like some people uh, like to use eggshell and, and uh, seashell. I do use them, but I think they are very slow to act on the pH. Uh, you can also use soda bicarbonate. But just be careful because there is sodium inside, so you don't want to, too much sodium on your, on your system and on the plants. A little bit is fine. So you understand that whatever water we use, we need to make sure the pH is going to be okay. Uh, so a pH around 7 is perfect. If you are collecting rainwater, rainwater for me is, is good, but you just need to make sure that uh, the pH is fine because sometimes it can be acidic depending where you live. 
And also just make sure when you collect rainwater that the roof of your house is, uh, I mean, the roof, the roof is one thing. So you don't want to have too much paint on the roof. But the, the most important thing is that you don't want the gutter to be in copper. Because copper is, uh, is quite bad for most plants. So be careful if your gutter is in copper, then you may add copper in the system and in the long term it may, it may cause some issues. If you have a well, if you have access to a river, if you have access to a lake, there are all options available. Now, just be careful. When you have a well, that's fine. Yeah, same thing, just make sure the pH is fine. Sometimes there is iron also in the, in the water of the well, so you will see it straight away because the water is uh, generally, when you get it out of the well, it becomes um, a bit orange, you know, rusty, especially when you add some oxygenation to it. So if you, add, if, you, if you let it breathe, if you let the water breathe and it turns orange, I wouldn't recommend using this water. Normally, this type of water needs to be filtered to remove the iron. If, um, if you oxygenate this water, the, the iron will precipitate on the bottom, basically the rust, and then you can use uh, the water. If you have a lake or a river nearby, that's uh, a water that is generally really good. The only thing is, as you can understand, if you use the water from a lake or a river, there is already a lot of biological activity in this water. So when you get your water, you will get a lot of other living creatures with. It's not just going to be pure water, right? You're going to have water, you're going to have algae that are going to come with the water, and post potentially um, disease, fish disease. Personally, I, uh, I think it, it's a risk to take because uh, in aquaponics we, we maintain good conditions for the fish. So my, my point of view is that if you have good conditions for your fish, uh, they shouldn't fall sick, but you never know. So when you take water from a lake or from a river, it's, uh, it's a risk that you take. But it's a possibility. Finally, we go back to tap water, because tap water is basically what is uh, available for most people. And depending on the country where you live, uh, there are different ways to sanitize the water. So, you know, the governments try to, I mean, very often provide water that is uh, drinkable. And to do so, uh, a water that is drinkable shouldn't have bacteria development. Even if bacteria may be beneficial for humans, you may have some pathogen bacteria. So the government want to kill anything into the water. That's why they use different types of chemicals. Um, chlorine is one of them. And then there are other types of cocktails that they use. So you need to understand that this water, the water from the, from the council, the water from the government, the tap water, basically, is designed to kill bacteria, yes? Because that's what they want. They don't want, bac they don't want bacteria in the water you drink. So if you add water that is designed to kill bacteria in a system that is designed to work with bacteria, by definition, you, you already understand that there is a big issue. What is going to happen is that this water that is high in chlorine, if you fill your tank with this water, and you raise the water to the grow bed where all the bacteria are living, you're gonna kill all your bacteria. So then, I don't know if we need to develop from there, but I let you imagine that if you kill all your bacteria, then the fish waste is not gonna be transformed into plant nutrients. Hence, the fish, the water toxicity is gonna increase. And at one point, it will kill your fish. You feel your fish will stress, you will see them swimming very strangely and then eventually they will die. So your bacteria are paramount in the aquaponic system. You do, you, you, must, you must see them as the key of the aquaponic system and 
the weakest part that we don't see, but that is there and we need to protect. So why? So how are we going to use this tap water if we are saying that it, it may kill our bacteria? Well, there is one thing that we need to keep in mind is that the chlorine that is used in uh, the tap water is able to be evaporated. So if you leave chlorine in, a, in an open tank, it will evaporate and uh, most of the toxicity will be gone within a few hours. So there are a few techniques to make sure that uh, we use tap water properly. The first principle for me that when you start aquaponics you can fill the tank with tap water because the bacteria are not present at the beginning. You know, we need to go through a cycle, cycling an aquaponics system. I, I made a video about it, it's called uh, the golden rule to start aquaponics. And I explained you how to cycle the system, so how to, to grow the bacteria that you need in the aquaponics system. But then, once the bacteria are here, how do you top up the water? Because as you understand, in aquaponics, we got evaporation. We got an open tank, an open pond, and we got all those plants. And the plants, as they grow, they, they, they sweat. And as they sweat, they drink more water. So there is evaporation all around every day, but in winter, it's, uh, it's not significant. In summer, it can be significant. So we have to add water. That's why I always say aquaponics is a really good system because it consumes 90% less water than a classic garden. However, it still consumes 10% of the water due to the evaporation. So we need to top up the system with water. And if you use tap water, what I recommend is to not wait too long before you top up the system. As you can understand, there, is, there are different ways to do it. You could say, okay, I leave the water evaporate and once every two months, I top up the system. But if you are in summer and you do it once every two months, well, maybe you will lose 40% of your water in two months. That's not what you want, right? In summer, if it's very hot. What you want is to top up this, uh, the water pond every time you have 10% of the water volume that is gone, or even less. Do not go more than 10%. And if you do this, what is going to happen is that when you add new water in the system, this new water will be diluted. So if you add tap water in the, in the pond, the tap water will be diluted within the current volume of water. And therefore, if there is a toxicity for the bacteria, when it's diluted, it becomes acceptable for the bacteria. So that's the first principle that is, uh, is going to allow you to avoid a lot of issues. If you just respect this simple principle, you will keep your bacteria in good conditions. Another thing that is important to put in place, I mean, that is possible to put in place, You see both cascades are running now. We got one cascade that is running here and one cascade that is running there. You know they are on, uh, on Bell Siphon, so the, the timing they the run is completely random. But now they are both running at the same time. It's quite nice. Anyway, one of the, one of the possibilities if you are working with tap water to use a big uh, a barrel or a tank and you put you fill the tank with tap water and you only use the water 24 48 hours after so it will leave time for the water to for the chlorine to evaporate and the water will become a bit better for your aquaponic system a bit more friendly for the bacteria that's also one possibility if you want to learn more about aquaponics and if you want to have all the tricks and tips, I would welcome you to the aquaponics revolution movement. Basically, I'm creating a community of people who are wanting to grow aquaponics, 
grow food in aquaponics in their backyard while preserving the environment and minimizing the impact. Being able to produce healthy food that is tasty and that is sustainable. So if you are interested to learn all the tips and tricks about aquaponics, I would highly recommend you to access this, uh, this community from the description of this video. There is a link. And from this link, you will be able to join the Aquaponics Revolution community. I hope you enjoy this video and if you have any comment, feel free to post it below the video. I see you in the next one. Bye bye.